Hi everyone and welcome to a quick tutorial on getting a ball bouncing in Maya. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the rig that we're using uh, gotten from the Autodesk education site. Um, it should open it up. I've gone ahead and switched it already to side view to make sure that we're loading up. Um, the main thing that we need to watch when we're starting off with this is we want to make sure that we're using the ball controller. Now, in this example, we're actually going to be using the rig to adjust several different things. Now, if you don't have a rig, that's okay. You could do this exact same process with a sphere, um, and you'll just have to control the squash and stretch on your own. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our ball. We're going to make sure that we're wound back to frame one. We're going to make sure we have 60 frames worth to work with here. We've got the one through 60 showing. And we're going to translate our our ball, move it up to about 15 in the translate Y box. Set that to 15. Make sure we're good. That's locked in. And we're going to hit S. Now, once you hit S, this should all be red. If this is not red, you've messed something up. So go ahead and go back and do this until you get this step right. This is the first keyframe that we're going to need. Now, these keyframes are going to control everything that else that we do from here on out. So we go from uh, frame one, we're going to jump ahead to frame 10, and we're going to move the ball, translate it back down to zero. Hit enter, make sure we've got this selected, and hit S again. Now it doesn't look like much has happened, but actually what we've done is we've created two key frames. Now by going into the graph editor, we can actually see what's happening here. So we're going to frame this up by pressing F, and we can actually see from frame one, We've started our ball up at 15 on the translate Y, and it's moved down to zero in frame 10. Nothing else has been changed, though you can see all of these at once. Don't let these confuse you. You can always just select on the one that you need at the time. So for now, we'll just use the translate Y. We're going to move our panels back to an orthographic. We're going to change this, make sure that we're focused. So we can see what we're going. Now, it's not really necessary. But it is, of course, always nice to see what we have. So frame one, we're up to 15, OK? Frame 10, we're back down to 0. In frame 16, we're going to move up to 10. Hit S. And you can see we've created another arch here. In frame 22, we're going to go to 0 again. Okay, and you can see here, another line added on. In frame 27, we're going to go to 5. Make sure we're selected here. Press S. Again, focus. We can see that the line is growing longer. We're going to go to frame 32 and go to 0. Hit a quick S and focus that again. You can see we're going down, up, down, up, coming back down. In frame 36, we're going to do a quick little bounce at the end to a 0.75. Hit S. Again, another small part made. Right? And then we jump to frame 40 and return to zero. And we can frame all that and we can see that here. So from frame one to 10, we're falling and then bouncing back up. So let's select all of it and you can rewind it and you can actually watch this happen. Okay. Now we can start to adjust and change things as we like. Now we have our ball and it's moving across but what we want are moving up and down but what we want it to do from here is move across so i'm going to take and adjust just the key frames that i've already created now we can create this by deleting all of these in the middle and just starting at one point and moving to another one so if i go ahead and jump to frame 40 where i want to end i can actually select the tangent that i want to move highlight it and move it down to, we'll stay locked in at frame, oops, sorry, 
we'll move it down to about minus 20. And you can see we could type that in up here. And we also notice that we're still in frame 40. Now, if we rewind and play, our ball moves across. Now, it's not really natural at the moment because, of course, it's curving in and out. What we want to do is be able to change this in the tan with the tangents. So we're going to highlight over these, break the tangents, and make them force them into a straight line. You can see we have that here now. All right, we've highlighted and we've selected here to make these a little straighter. So let's go ahead and rewind, take a look at that again. That's not quite right, but it's close. Okay. All right, our next step is to control how this works and make this a little bit smoother. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is highlight the bottom tangents here, not the ones that are at the top. We're gonna get these ones right here at zero. Now when a ball launches off the ground, we're gonna want a little straighter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the linear tangents here for just the bottom one. And you can see how it straightens out these tangents to create a much smoother and more realistic bounce. So after selecting that and having those done more linear, we wanna add a little more lift to our ball so it lingers a little more in the air. So we're gonna select the top ones here, okay? The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that these are broken. So we're gonna to go to tangents, break tangents. Now they should be multiple colors here. Mine are the pink and blue, yours might be the blue and orange, and that's okay, either one, it's the same thing. So we need to change the weights and the way that these work. So if you right click on the tangents, we can change to weighted tangents. After changing to the weighted tangents, you'll notice that they'll change shape and style. And then you can right click on them and free the tangent weights. Now that'll open up the circles here, which will allow you to then adjust them all. If you don't get to this stage, you're gonna lose the ability to adjust the size and scale of these. Now from here, it's just a matter of clicking on it and moving out to the side. Now we can shift and we can select our tangents. It's a little tricky sometimes. And scroll these out. Do these one at a time here. And make these a little more padded like that. And we could pad out our tangents to add a little more lift. So we select these, move this one here, select just this tangent, move that like that so we get a little more bounce. Here and here. we we'll probably do the same thing with this top one over here. Add a little bit of fall to it. Let's take a look. And you can see we're getting that bounce and it's hanging up there and you can adjust these as you feel necessary. You know, these don't have to be perfect. It's a matter of creating a realistic yet unrealistic cartoony bounce. Okay, so that should give you a good start. Now that you have something bouncing, you can do that. Now, the next step that I would have you do would be to add in something for our ball to bounce on. It's easy. What you need to do is really quick. We'll just do a create polygons primitive. We'll add a cube in here. You see the cube's already in. If we set this up, we're gonna have the ball bounce down. It'll land on that first one. We could duplicate that out, set that up out there, and add a third one. Okay, we could scale these up if we wanted to. Make them a little larger so that you can follow along and maybe adjust the uh, size as you want. So it'll bounce off this one and come here, make this one a little larger, and then perhaps this one even larger than that to give it a little bounce and a little life to see it bouncing up the stairs versus the traditional down to give our cartoon character a little something to do. So we can start by going through really quick and just seeing where our keyframes are. If we go back to our control, we can see our keyframe, of course, starts in 10. So what we can easily do is grab this, move this, drag this over here, from the side view, set it on top of the box and press S. You'll notice that these change here. We could jump to the next keyframe, uh, which has a little bit of that to it. That's where we're high. We can then come down to 22 where we're low. Move that up, make it so it's contacting the box, press S. And we've changed that a little bit. 
We then bounce up again at 20, uh, 27. We change this at 32, and we're supposed to be low again. So perhaps we want to do that right around here. Press S. And 36, we're in the air again, but notice we're in the box. So we probably want to be over this way a little bit. And then 40, we're going to land. So we're just going to shift these over like that. Now, this isn't going to be beautiful, but it should get the idea across. Okay, and you notice I fall through the box at the end because I'm transitioning back to the frames at the end. So I'll stop here. I'll take these key frames, I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste these at 60. And then you notice that the ball is still traveling through here. If we select our Y tangent, we really don't want that to be down at the end there. So we could just delete those and our ball will go back to where it was. Okay, see how he falls through. So we want to move him to catch him up to the rest of them. Okay, so we'll grab on there. And right about there. rewind play okay so that's a start try that see what happens and let me know if you have any questions thanks